Back on the show is Zach Otto, who's going to be taking on Kichi Kudimono at UFC Fight Night 110 on June 10th. Zach, how are you? Doing great. Good to see you again, James. Yeah, good to see you as well, Zach. Always enjoy talking to you. And uh, it's been a while since uh, you were last in the cage. You haven't fought since November. Was that a matter of you just wanting the time off, or was the UFC having a tough time getting you a fight? Uh, I did have an injury to my wrist that I actually fought with in Brazil against Sergio uh, that I got against Berkman. So uh, I tore a ligament in my wrist. I just thought it was kind of a sprain. I was going and getting some tests done, but I got scheduled right away for that second fight. So I just got right back in a training camp. I was taping it up. And then uh, I fought Sergio, and then it still wasn't getting better. And I was, I had a busy uh, last year, so I was kind of taking a little bit of time off just to kind of reset and let everything kind of heal up, but my wrist just wasn't. So then I went and got it checked out, got an MRI done and stuff, and it turns out I have a, a complete tear in one of my ligaments. Um, surgery isn't really an option for it, so I just needed some time for some scar tissue to kind of build in there and give me a little bit more support. Uh, my wrist was pretty unstable. I didn't have much grip strength or anything for a long time. So uh, it's it's ready to go now. As long as I keep it taped, it's was 100 percent if it's taped so wow that's crazy was it did you find it was a factor in your last fight like not being able to have you know your wrist 100 percent? no no it wasn't okay um like i said you know we deal with injuries all the time you don't really know what's serious and what's not a wrist uh you know i mean yeah i didn't have like as much grip strength and stuff as normal but you just kind of work around it tape it up you know keep going um i wouldn't say it was anything more of a, a hindrance than any other injury, you know, from fight camp to fight camp. So fair enough. And, and let's talk about your last fight. Obviously, uh, you know, things didn't go your way in that one. You got the split decision uh, loss in that one. Did you feel like when they read the scorecards, he was going to get it just because it was in Brazil? Yes and no. Um, I felt like I was really putting the, I felt like I clearly won the second round. And then I felt like in the third round, um, I was putting quite a bit of pressure on him. Had him wobbled up against the fence, completely gassed out. You know, I was really trying to put the volume on him and stuff towards the end. So I thought I won two rounds to one. Um, but like you said, it's it's Brazil and you know, and it's a close call. And it it's not like the judges, I don't think, really play a favorite. It, it's really the crowd. You know, I mean, there was a packed arena, and every time I land something, it's just it's just silent. And then when he just throws anything, whether it lands or not, the whole crowd goes crazy. And you can't help but have those, you know, extra things kind of play into your mind as you're taking notes and however you judge. So um, it, I knew it was going to be close, um, but I really thought I was going to get the win. Didn't, but it really lit a fire under my ass to get better. And he, now I'm back and I'll, I'll be a different fighter because of it. What was your experience like competing in Brazil? Because that was your first time, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, it was. Um, you know, the the plane trip and everything, we got in pretty early. None of that really bothered me too much. Um, there wasn't as many food options as I thought. So the weight, I, I was coming off of a fight previously. You know, uh, they were kind of back-to-back fights. So I thought my weight cut was going to go, like, super smooth, and it just kind of went normal. Um, but... It's fine. I mean, uh, you know, this kind of travel that I'm going to be doing, I don't think it's going to play a factor as far as uh, bringing down my game or anything like that. Um, it was a good experience to go through that. So now um, I'm prepared again. And you get those frequent uh, flyer miles, right? Those always help. You know, you can add those up and, you know, maybe you'll get some points. Yeah, like that exactly. Or so. Yeah, really put the miles on here. Uh, luckily, I had went to Greece for the first time in that kind of a, a, that long of a plane trip, uh, which got me prepared for the Brazil. And now I'm doing it a third time all within a year, which up until now, I mean, I'm 30 years old and I had really never been on a plane that long. Uh, and now I've done it. It's, I'm about to do it three times in, in one year. So you're, it's you're, you're a veteran more... now, you know, so you know what yeah, to expect. Yeah. That's great. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it certainly helps because, you know, again, having gone through that, you're, you know, you're going to be in, uh, you know, you know what to expect and all that stuff. But let's talk about the matchup. Um, so you are repl- you are a replacement fighter in this matchup because it was Worley Alves who's supposed to be taking on uh, Kuninoto. Um, how, when did you find out about this matchup and how quickly did it come together? I found out on Wednesday. Um, I was actually at practicing and um, one of my coaches, my, my business partner and stuff, 
came walking in and just said, hey, check your messages. Um, your manager's trying to get a hold of you. And, and I, I talked to Jason, and you know, he let me know about the matchup. And um, I, had, I was going to be going to the athlete retreat going on this last weekend. Oh, that's right. Okay. And I thought, man, you know, if I only have three weeks to prep for this, um, is there a way that I, I really wanted to go to the retreat? And get that information and see what that was like. But you know, with a fight coming up this quick, I had to really get focused here. So I, if they were if they were able to get me out of the retreat. I was going to take the fight, and that's what happened. So man, they should do like a backup retreat for like the fighters who like are competing this weekend on the Sweden card, and then like guys like yourself, because uh, that, that's kind of unfair. Because all these fighters, you know, everything's paid for. You know, you get some nice food. Like they should like do like a second one for the fighters who didn't get to go. What do you think about that? Yeah, I agree. Uh, my teammate Rick Len is he went over the weekend and uh, really enjoyed it. Was kind of giving me just a little background about some of the things going on, and I wish I would have gone, but you know, I, I had a, a bigger task at hand, so I've got to got to focus on that. Uh, let's talk about the matchup. Uh, Kunimoto, the big thing here is he hasn't fought in a while. Uh, 2015, February 2015. Uh, do you feel like the layoff is going to affect him in this matchup? You know, I I really don't know. Um, I'm expecting and preparing for a really refreshed and totally new evolved uh, fighter than what I had seen from him in the past. And if it doesn't turn out to be that way, well, better for me. But I'm, I'm preparing that way. Um, it has been a while. It's been, I think, over two years. Um, we'll see. We'll see what he's like. I'm not too worried or concerned about what he's really bringing to the table. I'm just looking to implement my game and uh, do my thing. You mentioned Rick Glenn. Uh, who are some of the other people helping you get ready for this fight? Uh, we have a lot, a lot of really good fighters coming up at our gym. Um, Tim Hiley is a 185-er. He's got a fight coming up in like uh, four or five weeks. He's about to be 4-0. Um a, a whole lot of guys, a whole lot of guys um, coming up at our gym. I, I bet in the next year or two, we're going to be a very uh, familiar name a- around the world. That's, I love hearing that. Um, how's the weight cut going getting down to welterweight? Uh, it's going pretty well. Um, I had just competed at a jiu-jitsu tournament a couple weeks back, and that just kind of – I you know, if I don't compete for a little while, I really get the itch. I, I'm one of those guys that's probably going to – do something to the day I die. I, I don't whether it's jujitsu in my forties or, or you know continuing on after that. I, I need to compete, and it, like you had mentioned, it had been a little while since my last fight, so I just had to get those uh, juices flowing again, and just kind of got dialed in, um, got my weight down a little bit for that. I, I won the tournament both in the gi and the no gi bracket. Congratulations! And uh, thanks. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, it, it would just kind of led right into this. So. Um, the weight won't be too bad. I, I mean, I do get pretty heavy in between fights. Um, my frame is a 170 pound frame, but I tend to put on, a, I think, a little bit more muscle mass. Um, you know, I mean, I, I used to play football at like 220. Wow. You know, like a solid 220, fast 220. So my it, my weight, if I go this amount of time without fighting, my body wants to start climbing up into those 200s. Um, so I have to stay diligent and make sure I stay right at that 200 mark is I try not to go above that. June 10th. How do you see this fight ending with you and uh, Kichi Kunimoto? <sighs> really hard to predict. Um, cause I don't know what he's going to bring to the table. And, you know, I, I would really, really like to get back to my finishing ways. I can't tell you what round, but I'm sick of these decisions, you know, these split decisions. I, I thought I clearly beat Berkman. All the media outlets thought I clearly did, but then, you know, one judge that night saw it the other way. And then with my last fight, you know, I'm just kind of sick of the decision. So um, I, I, whatever way I, I make it happen, it's, it's got to be a finish. What are you watching on Netflix right now? Um, I don't really watch a lot of shows, actually. Um, if anything, if I do ever watch TV, which I really do, I'm a, I'm a big game show guy for some no reason. No way. Okay, interesting. So Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune? Uh, even later, like uh, Family Feud okay. or um, or uh, Idiot Test, um, those kind of 
those kind of game shows. Is that sort of the dream, you know, at some point to go on one of those game shows? I would love to go on Family Feud with my family. Yeah, that'd be awesome. You got to talk to the UFC, see if they can, you know, use some of that WME yeah, uh, sway and see if they Steve can get you Harvey. in there. I love Steve Harvey. I think he's hilarious, and I think he kind of makes the show. So perfect. Okay, well, I'll do it. noted uh, for sure. There, uh, we're certainly looking forward to this fight, UFC Fight Night One Ten on June tenth. Uh, Zach, always enjoy talking to you, man. Where can people find you on social media? If you got any thank yous or shout outs, the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks. Um, you can find me on social media, Facebook and Instagram. is just my name, Zach Otto. Zach has a K and Otto has a W at the end. And then I'm on Twitter at the Barbarian MMA. Um, really like to thank my team, Pura Vita, BJJ, and MMA. Uh, best team in the world coming up. Like I said, you're going to hear more about us. And also my sponsors, um, Upper 90 Sports Bar, Midwest Sports and Performance, and um, and also Ink on Clothing. And also Ink on 